back with much reason, my pleasure to announce uh, two members of CAKE sitting right here in front of me. Vince, hey. B. Fiore, hey. nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. And uh, John McRae from, from the band CAKE. How do you do? Great meeting you guys. This is the latest. Uh, there's three. This is uh, Prolonging the Magic. First question on, on this one I have to, for you guys is uh, if, sheep, if sheep go to heaven and the goats are going to hell, where, where's, uh, where's this guy going to be going? Uh, I think uh, purgatory. Big stay yeah. in purgatory. Yeah. Yeah. They're, They're, so the smart. <laughs> They're so smart that they have to stay in purgatory for a long time. It's a, it's a name of a song on the album, if you don't know. Cake fans, I'm sure they know. Uh, a new element that emerges on Prolonging the Magic is uh, a country sound. Um, there, there's been like an increasing influence on the past mm. three, three albums. Where is this uh, country influence coming from? Where, I don't know. I mean, we always liked country. We just maybe... Uh, I think, you know, we had more of it on the first album than the second okay. album. And a lot of people didn't know about us for the first album. So I think it's just maybe coming back, rearing its ugly head again. But... Uh, and, uh, on the yeah. second album, there's also a tune from... It's a little uh, bit. Louis yeah, there's a little bit. Like, there's pedal steel on one track on Fashion Nugget and pedal steel on two tracks on, on this album. So it does seem like a little bit more country and, and maybe some country guitar playing, electric yep. guitar playing, too. Yep. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, some real references in, with our first video, some definite re references to country western music. Yeah. On this album, you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that, the yeah. first video is never there. And <coughs> there's um, a, lot of, a lot of hats. The one we're going to get into in a little yeah. while. And, it's, and the paid jeans and all that. Mm. The signature sound for you guys is the trumpet. I'm still suffering from those tight tunes, by the way. Yeah. You get to take them off every once in a while. Yeah, I'm about to take the bandages off. <laughs> um, I, was, I was talking about this sound, the trumpet sound, the signature sound, the sound that's been on all the albums, um, almost every song. Mm. Was it hard incorporating that, the sound of the trumpet to this country sound? Because you don't... Country and trumpets don't really go hand in hand. I don't, I don't think anyone... Yeah. Well, hey, can you guys shut up for a second out there? Thank you very much. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Bang down the class would be like. Sorry. Yeah, the, the the trumpet really didn't didn't work all that smoothly at all at the beginning of the band's history. And mm -hmm. um, you know we, you know John kind of hung with it and I worked with it. And uh, you know by the recording of the first album, at least some of the arrangements were tight. Right. So we had something to go on and, and stay with. And then just kind of kept up with it and, and made it work out. It took a it took a good six months to to like. Have the trumpet not completely suck, <laughs> didn't it? About wow, six months. that really hurts my feelings. <laughs> well, it sounds really good these days, especially. If I had, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, if I had a um, nickel for every time that Herb Alpert's name is mentioned in a review, you know. Yeah. Oh, Chuck Mangione. Is his name? No, right? no, he doesn't get mentioned. Not Chuck. Not Chuck? Uh, it, I don't think. Not in cake reviews, anyways. No, no. You know. But uh, yeah, it's like it was like a square peg in a round hole at first, and yeah. then sort of uh, ended up working out. Keep it, keep it up, because it's a really good sound. Uh, now, another thing that's kind of kind of new would be the whole, we, as we were talking about earlier, the, the whole country look. These mm. cowboy hats, these Stetsons, mm. the big belt buckles, and the, the boots, and all that. This is, some, this, is, this is new for you guys, new digs for you guys. Well, we, we, we got the clothes, and we used them in the video, and we had the clothes, and so we decided maybe we'd wear them. Once but, in a while, you know. But, but you're not only wearing them in the video, you're wearing them at your live shows? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, when we feel like it. But they are, there is something kind of um, almost uh, confining and um, uncomfortable and, and almost effeminate about country western uh, gear. I mean, the, the boots may seem macho at first glance, but they are high heels and they are pointy toed. So if, pointy. You, if you think about it, there's, there's something a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, we're taking the tip from Michael Jackson on how to do the androgynous kind of thing. Yeah, and the, really, the really the tight, tight, tight uh, young country jeans. Um, the ones that Travis Trigg wears. Yeah, I mean, there's, Wranglers. A, there's a lot of uh, effeminate yeah. uh, gesture it's like to the uh, country peacock western. Feathers. Yeah, it's very, yeah. very much male peacock uh, uh, display. Are you gonna be flashing those digs tonight? Uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know if we feel like it tonight. Yeah, we'll we see. seem to be going like one night off, one yeah. night on, yeah. sort of letting the clothes. Like you're saying, the cover a little bit. Yeah. 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 Let the, the blood start flowing again. Yeah. <laughs> Aside from the, the trumpet and these the new digs, uh, what what factor, what what key factors make Sorry. you guys different, different from other bands that are out there right now? Hmm. Well, uh, um, we don't we uh, turn it down instead of up a lot of times at our shows. We we turn the volume down. Turn pretty, it down pretty low. So, 
We're stridently uh, low volume. You turn it down so the, the crowd is able to sing along? And yeah, or that? so that people can hear the different elements to the music. When, when music is above a certain volume, the human ear is... Uh, so uh, yeah, well, actually, it, the, the information in the music is inaccessible to the human ear because of the noise that's, that's generated. The, the, the eardrum can't process the musical information properly. You're right. So, right. Yeah, we, we've tried to make it a Thanks. natural progression from, from playing in bars. You know, when we started out in rooms, we're really kind of sensitive to, to our own musicality, to everyone in the room, sort of playing to who was there mm -hmm. and the room that we were playing in, and then just sort of uh, let, it, let it grow from there on the stage. Very good. Uh, um, something else I noticed, at, I was at the show in Chicago, by the way, at the Vic Theater on Monday night. I was noticing the, the, the crowd the, and the dialogue between you guys up on stage and the crowd down below, uh, they're like very, very dedicated. They know every word to every song and they're, they're always there singing backup or whatever. Do you find this what's, often where, wherever you go? Yeah. Was it just the, that crowd in Chicago? What's the deal with that? I mean, I think oh. that the songs are easy to remember. So, I mean, I, I kind of write um, uh, sort of very simple melodies and, uh, uh, and just sort of like folk song type songs. So, hey. How you doing today? Oh, yeah, just one second. I'm talking to Cake here, okay? Yeah. Just want to give me one second. <laughs> yeah, the, the words are, are decipherable and uh, articulated, uh, you know, to enough of a degree that people can learn the words and, and sing along. And, and I think that the, the way that the music is coming out of the PA to the crowd, they feel welcome to sing along. They don't feel if they're singing along, they're going to be alienated. There's some sort of uh, equalization happening. And, and we bring the music down so they can sing if they are singing. Cool. Yeah. i got to get to one last thing. Uh, at the show in Chicago, house lights go up, the sound system goes on, the music started playing. You guys walked off stage, and you forgot to do something. Um, the latest single, Never There, you forgot to play that. Are you going to uh, remember that tonight? Or I, hope, I, hope that we, I hope that we remember. Otherwise, they're going to kick us out of the music business if we... Uh... Yeah. That was an honest I, I mistake. thought it was a ballsy it was, move. It wasn't thought, antagonism no. towards the music industry or anything like that. Oh, we've done that before with our first single. We, we didn't play the single because we were sick of playing it. But we're not sick of playing this one yeah. yet. I, when we do get sick of playing it, I, I bet you we might do it on purpose. But that was just because we were so caught up in... Uh, I guess playing the other, well, also playing the other songs. We were, you know. Well, they're all good songs. Again, uh, Prolonging the Magic is out. They're in stores today. It's uh, the third release from Cake. Good talking to you guys, Vince. Hey, thank you. Have fun tonight. Okay. John, excellent stuff. The show is so well, by the way, tonight at the Opera House. This is the latest. John McRae directed this one. It's called Never There. Cake on Much Music. Thanks, guys. I was getting the wrap-up signal behind me.